Uh, welcome back to AP World History. Uh, we'll be looking at Chapter 34, and we're looking at Asia, uh, nation building there, and revolutions. Uh, this shows a Pacific Rim. Um, you can see from Japan, South Korea, China, uh, Russia being on the uh, bordering the Pacific. Um, islands in the South Seas, uh, Papua New Guinea, uh, uh, Indonesia, Sumatra now, um, uh, Malaysia, uh, Thailand, Vietnam, all these countries being part of the Pacific Rim. Uh, I guess you could, s we're focusing more on the, uh, uh, the, the East than we are in the West. Uh, Korea was divided uh, between the Russians and the United States. There were two occupying zones after World War II, uh, and eventually we will fight uh, a war there against the North Koreans who will try to take over the South Koreans. Taiwan uh, uh, broke away from China, uh, and it is an independent country. Um, and, of course, China wants it to, to be reabsorbed into uh, mainline China. Taiwan being a capitalist uh, country, uh, China moving towards capitalism, uh, but still a totalitarian government. Um, in terms of Korea, we will fight a war there um, for three years. Japan, after World War II, uh, is uh, it goes through a, a process of democratization and an end to military uh, buildup. Um, Douglas MacArthur will oversee this recovery uh, after World War II, um, and the emperor will become a figurehead. Uh, they will have economic and social reforms there, uh, military disbanded, uh, more civil liberties uh, extended to people. Uh, this shows, again, the Pacific Rim, these countries involved in Asia. Uh, new constitutions were written uh, for Japan. Uh, the Liberal Democratic Party uh, was created and monopolized Japanese politics until the 1990s. Uh, Japan today uh, has... Uh, uh, is considered a democracy, a capitalist country. Um... It does have social programs to take care of uh, the people, me uh, medical and so forth, welfare. Um, and Japan's culture, uh, for the most part, has been traditional and they've uh, retained much of that Shintoism and so forth. Uh, during the 1950s, uh, Japan uh, experienced a lot of economic growth, uh, became one of the top three economic powers in the world. Um, certainly an active government uh, in terms of expanding education and encouraging growth. Uh, labor uh, policy, social activities, uh, uh, if you become employed at a, a job, for the most part you're employed there uh, and you're expected to be loyal to that business, uh, doing whatever is necessary to make it a profitable business. Um, many Americans saw Japan after World War II becoming a huge rival to the United States in terms of uh, industrial output. They have been uh, supplanted or replaced by China. Uh, Jap Japan has gone through a period of the last 20 years of uh, stagnant economic growth. Uh, they are probably, uh, they do have some pollution problems, they are working on those. Uh, because it's such a poor country in terms of natural resources, they've had to rely on nuclear power, uh, which has created some problems uh, in recent years. Uh, Korea, uh, Ch uh, Korea still divided uh, South and uh, Korea, North Korea. Uh, Kim Il Young was uh, a song was uh, the leader who took uh, over North Korea, and Ri will lead the South, and they will fight a war for three years. Uh, essentially, we just have a ceasefire there. Amer we have a large American uh, presence there to prevent North Korea from invading and taking over. An armistice was signed in 1953. Uh, South Korea has become one of the more prosperous nations in the Pacific Rim. Uh, in terms of park 
Chung Hee a seized power in South Korea in 1960. Uh, the Hyundai and the uh, Daegu uh, are two huge industrial complexes with or companies within uh, uh, Korea that uh, leading economic growth. Uh, population density uh, has soared. It uh, certainly is a if you visited Korea, uh, it uh, is a nation on uh, the rise. North Korea uh, certainly experiencing famine and uh, a depressed economy. Taiwan experienced economic growth. This was the island off of China proper uh, and become an industrialized nation. Um, uh, the nationalists uh, fled uh, mainland China uh, when they were kicked out by the communists and they will occupy uh, Taiwan. Uh, this shows a picture of Taiwan off the coast of China and they've had some uh, difficulties with there's been some saber rattling uh the united states uh, sworn to protect taiwan's security uh singapore gained independence in 1965 uh and it's one of the a small nation at on the end of the malaysia principle uh, peninsula uh and it's one of the more modern nations and one of the cleanest uh cities nations in the world Hong Kong eventually was turned back to the Chinese government in 1997. This shows Singapore. Um, if you visited there, it's a, a very beautiful city uh, and a very cosmopolitan. Lots of different people there. Uh, Chiang Kai-shek uh, um, formed an alliance. This was uh, back during World War II to fight the Japanese with Mao Zedong. Uh, uh, essentially, these two will join forces uh, and uh, will uh, fight the uh, Japanese until World War II and then turn on each, each other. 1949, Chang and his army fled Taiwan and Mao Zedong, who was the leader of the Communist Party, the People's Republic of China, will be created. This shows a picture of Mao being supported by the peasants. Uh, this shows uh, uh, the control by the Soviets um, and the Japanese uh, during 1940, up till 1945. Uh, you can see that uh, the communist power base uh, from the 1930s on was in Manchuria uh, and northern uh, China. Uh, Mao was able to uh, win support because he promised uh, reforms, land reforms to the peasants, uh, and these for reforms, are, uh, he was hoping, would uh, improve the conditions of people living within China. Although a lot of the things that they tried uh, were unsuccessful, um, uh, they seemed to have a, a better pulse than the nationalists uh, in terms of uh, gaining support from the peasantry. Uh, the relationship between China and the U.S., uh, USSR, the communists, both of them are communists, uh, but there will be disputes over borders between these two countries, uh, and those relationships were sour. Uh, one of the first things that Mao tries to do is his first priority was redistribution of land to the peasantry. Industrialization was needed. Uh, this was the great leap forward. Uh, which essentially wanted to make things on a small scale, but this turned out to be uh, a disaster economically. Uh, in the end, uh, people uh, suffered uh, because of the policies of the communists in China. Uh, one of the things that the Chinese will do is, uh, knowing that they have the largest population in the world and the, their ability to feed them is somewhat limited, uh, institutes a one-child policy. So uh, if you lived in the peasantry, if you lived in the countryside, you were allowed to have one child. Two, if you lived in an industrialized area. This is a great leap forward in 1958. Uh, create enormous collective farms. Uh, peasants' resistance uh, to this collectivization uh, led to 20 million uh, uh, deaths. Uh, and the hungry ghost, well, people just didn't have enough to eat. 
Uh, one of the things that will improve in China is uh, uh, women's rights. Uh, and they under Mao, they were so supposed to be equal to men. Uh, women in the Communist China. Uh, legal equality established, although I wonder uh, if they are achieving full equality. Uh, arranged marriages were less common. Uh, women worked in industry, uh, received education, uh, but still males dominated politics and uh, the more important jobs. Uh, Mao launched the last campaign known as a cultural revolution to restore dominance uh, over, pragmat and over pragmatist. Um, uh, Mao's Red Guard publicly ridiculed and abused uh, his uh, political rivals, uh, so anybody who was opposed to Mao uh, uh, was effectively eliminated. The Gang of Four attempted to seize uh, control of the government and were arrested following Mao Zedong's death. Uh, after Mao's death, the pragmatists, or these are the people trying to figure out a way to make things work, uh, will open up the China to the West. In fact, uh, President Nixon will establish diplomatic relationships uh, with the Chinese in the 1970s, and the United States and Japan or China have become huge trading partners. Uh, as far as Vietnam is concerned, uh, Indochina had was a colony of the French. Um, after uh, World War II, uh, Ho Chi Minh, who has been trained in France, will attempt to seize power and kick the French out. And in 1954, uh, he will succeed in defeating the French. Uh, eventually, the French, uh, when they're kicked out, there's uh, going to be a Geneva Peace Conference. Uh, Vietnam is uh, divided into two parts with the understanding that there will be free elections in 1956, which never took place. Eventually, the North will uh, inspire the South, uh, Viet Cong, these were the communists, uh, to fight the South, who seems to be pro-West, are pro-West, um, the dim government. Uh, eventually, this war will ensue, and f uh, eventually the United States will leave in 1973 and it will revert to communism. Uh, uh, Ho Chi Minh and the Viet Cong will use uh, guerrilla tactics uh, and they eventually will succeed after a long lengthy war with the United States and her allies. Um, they may ask you a few questions about Vietnam uh, simply because the United States is so involved there. Uh, we were afraid that the communists would take over the rest of Southeast Asia, and that's why we fought there, hoping that we would forestall a domino effect, that is, if one country fell, perhaps the rest would fall to communism. And let's stop right there.